Never apologize or try to appease a bloodthirsty mob of political activists because once you apologize, they'll just ask for your head next. And that's what's happening with Ubisoft and the activists and games journalists that have been supporting them all throughout their crusade to make Yasuke a samurai for Assassin's Creed Shadows. And this was the main goal for Ubisoft for the past few months, trying to convince the populace that Yasuke was a real historical samurai with influence and a title within Japan, even though there was no evidence contributing to that fact at all. And I think that was the biggest problem with Ubisoft's take on Assassin's Creed Shadows, where it was trying to make up a fictional world of a character a reality. If it just stuck to fantasy, no one could really complain about Yasuke being in Assassin's Creed. People would be just slightly interested. Some people would be annoyed because you didn't use a, a Japanese character, but you had now to be the Japanese kind of focal point of the game. So anything could be excused. But the fact that they try to erase Japanese history, rewrite it, and try to convince the fan base that this was actual historical fact led to this outcome where there was a major backlash within Japan itself against this game, stating that it was trying to ridicule and rewrite historical history for Japanese people. And it kind of was. It was putting Japanese people in a place of being historical slavers of African tribesmen. I think that is a thing that Japan doesn't want to be associated with since they already have enough accusations of them being oppressors with other Asian countries. Why add African countries to that list? And it seems like the sources that Tom Miss Lockley, the person that was the creator of the Yasuke myth of him being a samurai, is stating that the Japanese people were a historical slaver of African tribesmen. And I think this is the biggest thing that Japanese people had a problem with, where this was stating that something that never occurred, something that there's no evidence of, actually happened. And I think that is why Thomas Lockley, the author, went into hiding, because his historical perspective is completely fabricated and put Japanese people in a position they were never really in. I think that is uh, the big controversy with the Japanese people. But of course, if you tell this to the political gaming journalists or activists, they'll just say Japanese people are incredibly racist and they should be ashamed of themselves. And this is the perspective that we're hearing from gaming's journalists when it comes to this idea and apology from Ubisoft. They say Ubisoft did the wrong thing. They should never apologize. They should call out Japanese people as the racist bigots as they are and they should not force Japan to apologize for not accepting a rewriting of their history and it sounds absurd but this is the actual connotation and ideas from political activists in America that Japan should bow down to the rewriting of their own history from foreign actors and I think that is the craziest thing that we're seeing right now is where the gaming journalists are bullying other cultures the people that are supposed to be open to diverse cultures are bullying another culture to follow their version of history even though there's no facts behind it and I think that's the thing that we're seeing from games journalists where they just out there pointing out that Japan is an incredibly racist country that needs to change itself and this is a step into changing it by adding Yasuke into history even though there's no historical record of him being this great samurai and I think it would have been fine if it just made a fantasy game but they were set out to rewrite history with this game and I think that's an interesting fact that we're seeing nowadays with a lot of the gaming journalists fighting against this apology where they're saying Ubisoft needs to take back their apology. They need to attack Japan and they need to rewrite history because this is not what people wanted to see with this game. People wanted to see Yasuke etched into the history of Japan through this game. And it kind of seems like that is the case. If you look at Wikipedia and all the other factors within the gaming industry, they're trying to make this a historical fact. And you can even go to the, the Reddit page itself where they are denying the apology of Ubisoft saying, we don't care what Ubisoft says. Yasuke was a samurai there's no more debate and this is the the stance of everyone that is a fan of this game and it's just kind of this absurdity that we're seeing in the modern day political environment where it's not about truth fact or historical positioning and in, in society it's not about respecting other cultures or other people with their own diverse populist group no, it's about enforcing your personal ideology across the whole world. And I think we can see this with how the journalists are reacting, how the people that are in support of this game are reacting, where it's not about actually getting truth, historical fact, and representing different cultures. It's about imposing your own culture onto other cultures. And I think we see that with what's happening in Japan right now, where people are just lashing out against Japanese people, against Japanese culture for not accepting the westernized version of their own history. And I think that 
that is the, the startling thing, especially coming from an author that has blatant lies in his articles and his own book that he admits to that are blatant lies. And they are still championing his version of history because it fits their own narrative structure of who's the oppressor and who is the victim. And I think we see this oftentimes with political activists where they're always trying to put at least minority groups, at least black African groups in this minority victim status where they can go attack the oppressor of that group. And I think they want to put Japanese people in this position that there were some evil African slavers where they can now attack Japanese culture as some ultimate evil to minority groups and be a representative icon in pushing back against Japanese culture. And I think this is almost like an attack on Japanese culture, but seeing this reaction online is showing me that is probably the case where they're going full steam ahead with his idea, even though the facts don't represent this because this is their narrative that they want to hold on to. And I think this is only going to exasperate the situation with Yasuke in Japan because I feel like what they're doing now is just being headstrong with their own beliefs where their beliefs are more valuable than other cultures in their entirety and I think seeing gaming journalists attack Japanese culture incessantly with this idea that they need to bow down to their version of history or they're going to be perceived as sexist racist bigots that is the routine of attack from these activists where they put these labels on you where these labels almost mean nothing to a lot of people nowadays because they see this as just a plain name calling from political activists when they don't get what they want and it is that specifically you can see this with all the gaming journalists coming out in unison with the same idea and talking points where it becomes obvious right now that this is a coalition of people that have the same goal of actually imposing their culture onto these other cultures and i think we see that all throughout the entertainment industry for the past 10 years where it stopped being about entertainment it's been about culture and of course we could say it's been about culture for a long time but now it's even excessively so where it's sacrificing the quality of the film and i think beforehand it wasn't sacrificing quality it wasn't trying to impose historical fact uh, so directly if people called out that this was fake the, the the director's producer said yeah we just did it for artistic freedom they didn't try to say no this is what really happened in history no people just said this wasn't happening it just made sense for the movie because we're making a movie and i think that is uh, the crazy thing that we're not seeing here where ubisoft could just say yeah yeah, it's not real but it makes a fun game and who can argue against that that having a, a black african samurai is a fun concept and idea i would say okay that makes sense this is actually more fun to have a, a giant black african samurai in japan if it was a fantasy but that's not the case they want to rewrite history for their own narrative structure of the reality of japan itself where they can put japan as an oppressor which you can say is obviously the case for japan when it comes to other asian countries that have a historical history of oppressing korea china philippines and multiple other asian countries so it's not hard to say japan was an oppressor nation especially with world war ii but that's not the type of oppressor they want japan to be they want japan to be their version of oppressor and that is an oppressor of black minorities of some sort where they can take their own westernized version of oppression and bring it to the east and it's weird to actually think about this but this is in line with the marxist histography where it is about creating an oppressor and a victim class within the dynamic and relationship with the country we know ja japanese people have their own history of being this oppressive country in asia but it's not the same in its relation with america but if you put this black african history point of view into it you can make that dynamic where okay america's the victim uh, Japan Japan is the, the victimizer and they need to appease all the demands of the victim and this kind of fits into the narrative structure of the westernized political activist philosophy where it is kind of Marxist and communist it's about finding oppressors and victims in all classes of society and I think this is their version of doing that with Yasuke as uh, the head point but that's just my theory of the situation but it's kind of funny to see everyone reject Ubisoft's apology especially the games journalists and the, the red community where they are rejecting everything even though people within the, the the sub forum are saying what are you talking about this is a disputed fact we can talk about this but no it's being run probably by uh, ubisoft or some other people within the games journalist community so they have their own goal in mind i think we're seeing it play out still for the future but you tell me what you think about the situation i'd like to hear your thoughts like comment share subscribe this wagner knows why catch you next time